Hey everybody, it is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures, and happy, what is it, Thursday before Halloween. Hello, how is everybody doing today? I am live, so if you are watching this later, um, go ahead and go down there and hit the little bell and the subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you can be notified when I go live or when I put up new videos. Today, oh, let me introduce myself because I know a lot of my friends are here who know who I am. But if you're new here, my name is Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures. I'm a stay at home mom that makes videos all about different ways to make and save money. I have a passion for jewelry, I have a passion for merch by Amazon. So a lot of my stuff has to do with that. But today, we are going to be talking about black. <laughs> I thought it'd be fun for the month of October. In my, I have a jewelry group, uh, the link is down below. I thought it'd be fun in my jewelry group to really focus on black because it's October, Halloween, right? So we've been talking a lot about it in the group this week, sharing links, sharing information, all about the different types of black stones that are found in jewelry. And today I'm doing a follow-up video to do with that. So you might come across different types of jewelry when you're out thrifting or at garage sales and not know if you've got something super valuable or if it's just plastic or, or what you're looking at. So it's really important to educate yourself so that is, let's say you're reselling it, you know what kind of price to put on it. That's one thing I forgot to pull up was the price points for the different stuff. Oh, well, <laughs> we're all human, right? Um, and I'm just going to preface this with also, I know stuff about black jewelry I am by no means an expert so um, I'll share with you some of my the websites I go to and again uh, if you are interested if you're really interested in selling jewelry I highly encourage you to join jewelry, jewelry lovers and sellers the link is down below it is a paid group but it's nice because it keeps the trolls out everybody's nice and <laughs> nobody's nasty if you're I don't I mean uh, yeah anyway there are some very dedicated jewelry sellers who don't mind being rude. But anyway, moving forward, I'm gonna show you what I've got, and then I'm gonna uh, talk to you about the different things that they might be, and then we'll test them to share, to figure it out together, okay? So I've already tested them, so I already know, but we'll do it together. Um, so the things we're gonna be talking about are jet, sometimes called Whitby jet. We're gonna talk about French jet, obsidian, onyx, and plastic. <laughs> now there is something there's there's other things like bog bog oak and gutta percha which and again if I pronounce it incorrectly I apologize in advance but let me just go into showing you what I've got some of it I've thrifted some I have um, gotten at garage sales and some was my grandmother and great grandmother's so I'll, I'll share with you as we go which which was which so and honestly when I was testing these things something I thought was jet didn't end up being jet and something that I thought was plastic ended up being jet so <laughs> there you go all right so this is the first piece this was one in my uh, my great grandmother's necklaces so this is one the chain is a bit knotted up so I need to but that's the clasp on this one. Oh, and I forgot to make oh, I'll get there I'll get there how about that I always get ahead of myself um ah! oh my gosh that's Jason. I'll talk to Jason later. <laughs> okay, so these were also my great grandmother's, these little black earrings. So there's those ones. These were also in my great grandmother's stuff. These black earrings, they are clip on like so. And let me just stick with my great, my grandmother and great grandmother's stuff. So this necklace was also amongst her things. So these are ones that I probably won't sell because they're just, they've, <laughs> I don't have any daughters. Maybe I'll have granddaughters someday um, that can can inherit this. I'm trying to see if there's a, a name on that note. Um, okay, then the next one, this is one, it was either in a jewelry jar or um, it must have been in a jewelry jar because I don't generally buy stuff like this. I am guessing it was in a jar. I'll have to go back and look. So that's this. Maybe I would have bought it, but mm, probably not. This one looks like that. It's got a good sound. <laughs> you know how I am about sounds. Um, this is another one I think was in a jewelry jar. Looks like so. If you want to guess in the chat as we go, 
<laughs> That's a big giveaway. If you know your black jewelry, there's a big giveaway right there about what this one is. So there's this one. And it has just like a lobster claw closure on it. Then this was also one that was in my great grandmother's stuff. Ah, it's hooked. I'm going to say hey in the chat in just a second. Thanks for being here, guys and girls. So there's that one. There's some dead giveaways on this one as to what it is. Only I just noticed something, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and this one has, has this sort of clasp on it, like just a hook, but it is Germany on it. Does it say Germany? Ah, okay, there's that. And two more. This one, again, jewelry jar find. Okay, get up here, you. It's just a big, long, beady, beady black necklace with silver bits between. And this one, like so. So, um, oh gosh, what was I going to say? Now I've forgotten totally. Oh well. All right. Let me pop in the chat, say hello. Again, I don't know. I'm on my MacBook Air um, because my pro has to get. I need to take it into the Apple store, but I have my friend Joni Kramer there. Hi, Joni. Hi, Debbie and HP Picker. That's Tracy and John and Henry's there. Hello, Julie Thrifty Paper Garden and Mary. Hello, Heather and Lori. Bev's there and Tammy and Ginny. Did I already say hi? Hi. Hi, hi, everybody. So, yeah. Um, so, jumping into it, let's just de define the different things and I'll do a couple screenshots and then we'll talk about how to test the different um, necklaces and pieces of jewelry that we've got. So first up is Jet. Basically, Jet is um, from trees. So it's similar, I mean, it's not like Amber. Amber's like the tree sap. Jet is from trees, and I'm gonna pull up my, because I'm gonna misspeak so, so badly. Here, I'm gonna screen share. This is a, open you. This is a graphic that I did for the jewelry group. Um, talking a little bit about, about jet. Um, so it's formed from fossilized wood um, of a certain kind of tree. It's called like a monkey something tree, um, dating all the way back to the Jurassic period. So it's basically a fossilized wood. Um, it's considered a gemstone, and if you can get it under a magnification, you'll, you'll see that it's got some wood grain to it. Now, this part where it says chips, are, it chips in a shell pattern, it can be kind of tricky because I know glass will chip in a shell pattern as well. Um, and it can have pyrite inclusions, which is like fool's gold. So it might have little gold inclusions. I haven't seen that, but supposedly it can. So <laughs> this was a fun fact. Romans thought that jet had magical and medical properties, including the ability to detect epilepsy and act as a test of virginity. <laughs> fun fact. Um, so here we go. So it came into popularity when Queen Victoria started wearing it after her husband died. And it has some of the same features as amber. So if you if you're in jewelry lovers, we did a big amber unit. This is the teacher in me. We did a whole amber unit one month where it was all about amber and things that replicated or, or imitated amber. So it does have some of the same properties as amber. So there's that. And frequently it's called Whitby Jet. Sometimes it's called Whitby Jet because there is a town in England, Whitby, England, and it it has a lot of jet there. They find a lot there. Um, there's a video out on YouTube of a girl finding finding it on, like washing up on shore. And so she's sitting there testing it on stones to show, like, because there's a there's something that it does that you can test it on stones. Hello, Kalita. Hello, hello. Okay, so there's that. And, and then French jet, which is a glass that is made to imitate jet. Basically, that's it. So it's going to be colder than jet. I didn't get into the properties of that. I guess I'll stick with jet and then we'll move on. <laughs> I have all my notes here, but then I didn't really, I was like, let's just do it. That's probably part of my problem. Okay, so testing it and some of the properties of jet. I'm trying to do this without picking it up because I know where it is. Should I just pick it up? Should I just do it? Um, so the one that, that ended up being jet, I will, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> the one that ended up being jet was this one, which I, I'm, I'm thinking I got in a jewelry jar. And when I I didn't think, I thought it was plastic. One, I mean, the sound of it, the touch of it, you know, it feels really lightweight. It feels plasticky almost. Um, so I just thought it was a plastic necklace. Now, um, what, the one I thought was going to be Jed was this one, which turned out not to be. The reason that I thought this one was going to be Jet 
is the facets in it. But now that I've, I've learned a little bit more about Jet, um, I, I can see now why it's not. But but Jet generally the facets are going to be big because they have to hand cut it because if you if you try to manufacture that it chips and breaks. It's way more brittle. Um, so anyway, this one ended up not being Jet. Now that I know a little bit more. I can tell because one, it's pretty heavy and it's really cold to the touch. So with Jet, it's going to be warm or room temperature. So there's that one. So there's that. Um, something else that it does that is similar to Amber is that it's electrostatic. And if you watched um, any of my Amber videos, I've got some. I'm going to show you that what that means. So I've got some little bits of paper here, whoop, whoop, and I have an Amber earring, and basically. To make to show that it's electrostatic or it'll kind of like when you rub your shoes on the carpet and it you can go zap somebody with your static electricity. Um, so I'm gonna take my amber earring and rub it on my jeans to get it warm, warmed up, and then it'll pick up these little bits of paper like glass or plastic. It's not gonna do that. So see it, it it's electrostatic like so, and it'll pick it up. I gotta warm it up again. Sarah says, I'm from Whitby, working, I'm working Jet right now. Hey, okay, if I speak, if I must speak, you gotta, you gotta call me out on it. Cause I'm, I'm, I know a little, probably enough to get me in trouble. I'm an enthusiast, that's what I say. Anyway, so, so there's that. That one is, you guys saw, I don't have to keep redoing it. So let me show you. The one that I thought was Jet that ended up not being, um, when I do that, there's no reaction. So rub, 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 rub. And I'll try to pick it up. Nothing. Nope. 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 So when I was testing this one, and I and I was like, oh, I guess I'll do it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I thought it was plastic, but I'll just go for it. So I started. You can hear it clanking. And then I came over, and you can see it's picking it up. Now it got cooled off again. It was doing it really well earlier, of course. I'm rubbing it, getting it warmed up, and there we go. <laughs> you guys saw that, right? <laughs> the amber one really grabbed it. <laughs> I think you guys saw it. There. There you go. See, it's picking it up. Okay, so there's that. Um, so it has that electrostatic property like amber does, and then also it will leave a brown streak on like an unglazed piece of china or like in this one video I watched she was doing it just like on a rock and so I have this which I do some of my other testing on so I'm gonna find a white spot and a piece where I can rub it where it will be inconspicuous because it's a soft you know substance on the hardness on the Mohs hardness scale I don't know what the softness is on the hardness what do you call it so I'm gonna rub it very carefully <laughs> Diane says, I feel like I'm in science class. So I'm rubbing it along here, and you can see the streak that it left right in that area. That's what that is. So like the other one that I thought was Jet, when I did that on a an area like so, you know, it didn't it didn't leave any kind of mark at all. So there's that. Um. Treasure Pirates says, well, I thought plastic would do the electrostatic thing. I don't think so. I'm going to grab my plastic one. I'm pretty sure this one's plastic. Here's why. <laughs> There's a seam, and Jet is not going to have a seam. Um, now, I did read that Gutta Percha can have a seam, but I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think the plastic will. Let's go for it. I could be learning something new today, too. <laughs> Here we go. Rubbing the plastic one. Watch me be wrong, but that's okay. Uh, Sarah says we use uh, 1500 grit wet and dry sandpaper, draws cinnamon brown. Oh, okay, nice. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the plastic totally did. All right, <laughs> thanks, Treasure Pirate. <laughs> I totally misspoke, but you know what? That's why we're all here together. And there, okay. So, but the plastic won't leave the brown streak. Watch it, watch it do. That's fine. We're all we're all learning together, right? No, no, no streak. Yeah. Nope. There's nothing. Okay. 
Oh, good. Abundantly yours got two boxes. Yay. Okay, so moving forward, and again, totally, oops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I misspeak, I, I'm totally known to do that, and I have no problem being wrong, because we would all rather learn correctly, right? Okay, so there's that. Um, no seam, warm to the touch. Also, which I'm not going to do this, is um, the hot pin test, where you can poke it with a hot pin, and it'll smell like acrid. Um, okay, so there's that one. Then, so the French jet, and if I'm missing anything, oh, 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 I did. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Joni. Um, oh, thanks, Treasure Pirate. Yeah, again, I, I have no problem being wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to share because there's a picture where it talks about the, the facets on jet when, they, when, when it's faceted that, um, it, they won't be uniform, um, not not always. Anyway, I'm gonna say always or not always, and then I'll be totally wrong. That's fine. All right. So where did it go? So this one is talking about the chips. So you can see how it's got like rough cut facets in it. Um, and then here, this is talking about like if it ships, it'll chip in like this shell shaped pattern. So there's that. And where is that other one where I, I had a picture pulled up? Here we go, this one, where you can see the facets are not all like uniform, you know, cut in a, um, like machine cut, right? So there's that. Let me stop screen sharing. And then, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so, okay, next up was the French Jet. And uh, some companies started making French Jet to mimic jet, and but French jet again. I lost my my notes back here. French jet is like, basically is a glass, and again they would start trying to hand cut it to to look like jet. Um, so I I am mm, thinking this one is either just straight glass or maybe just like French jet because of you know, the weight of it, it feels really cold. It, it sounds like either a glass or a stone. I don't, but I, I, I'm leaning more towards thinking it's like French jet. And then that super high gloss on it, you can see the super shine. Um, usually, from what I've read, jet won't be as shiny. They can get a shine on it, but it won't be as shiny. Okay, um, so there's that. That was the one I thought was probably going to be French Jet. This one as well, um, basically because, one, it did not attract the, it wasn't electrostatic, and it's cold to the touch. So there's that one. Also, oh, I already mentioned that. On, on the Jet, if you look under a magnifying glass or a microscope, you can see the wood grain. I don't have a microscope to share with you. So... Um, and I showed you this one already. It has the seams, so generally, you know, or rather Jet won't have seams in it. But look at every other other one. Like, I think these oblong ones are plasticky, but then these ones in between are super shiny. So I didn't take a close look at those. I'll have to look back at it later. I'm looking now to see, are they uniform? I just realized they're not the same as the ones next to them. Y'all can see the, sh the sheen on the two different styles. Would they put plastic with jet <laughs> or a glass? I don't know, maybe, maybe. Um, hi, Kristen's Curiosities, hello, hello. Okay, so, and then this one again, I think are just straight up glass beads. They're super shiny. They look like, you know, you could go buy them maybe at Hobby Lobby and make a necklace out of them really uniform, uniformly cut. Um, so the next one I was going to talk about was Onyx. Let me grab that one up. So this one is Onyx. <laughs> it's really heavy, super black. Now one thing I learned about Onyx as I was doing this is that Onyx, um, most black Onyx is dyed black. So a lot of times you'll find pieces that have these gray or white streaks and swirls in them, like that, like this. 
Um, so I didn't know, I did learn that about Onyx as I was doing this. So it's pretty heavy, it's cold to the touch, and frequently, not always, you'll see gray or white streaks in it like so. Diana Kruger says, Jet was worn as morning jewelry during Victorian times because it didn't have a high shine. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So there's that one. And then I know I pulled up, let's see what else did I say. I pulled up something else about Onyx. Let me pull this up. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, we're back here. That's Okay, so here's another piece of Onyx. This is from another site that's talking about different um, black stones and things. This one talks more about the crystalline structure and things like that because it's um, more <laughs> like crystal. Uh, I don't. I don't know the right word to use. <laughs> um, Margaret, do I have a Cracker Jacks ring? My husband lost his wedding ring while lighting up storage box. And we... I don't have a Cracker Jacks ring. <laughs> nope. Oh darn. Um. Okay, so there's that. So that's the onyx. You see those gray or white streaks in it. There's that. It's got like this kind of like gray or white inclusion. And then the other thing that sometimes you'll find in black jewelry is obsidian. And obsidian is pretty cool. It's a volcanic glass. So it's not technically like a, a mineral. It's more like a, a glass, I guess. So from what I've been reading, um, and it it too, when it breaks, will break in unusual ways. Let me let me just screen share so I can see. So like this curved glass look, like when you break, you know, chip a mirror or something that's got that curved glass. So like here's obsidian, it's super, super high shine, you know, it's forged from volcanoes, right? Volcanic activity. Um, so that is another thing. I thought that I had some jewelry pulled up with the obsidian, but I don't. Um, so that is something else that you might find in black jewelry is that it is obsidian. I know I had something else up because I was going to show you. I've sold, um, goodness, maybe I closed out that window. Because um, there's a type of obsidian that I really like called snowflake obsidian. And so it's got these like white inclusions in it or grayish sometimes. Um, let me pull it up. Obsidian. Let me see. I did. I had it open. Where did they go? I don't even know. Obsidian. Okay, come on now. Okay, here, I'll just do this screen share for you. There's different kinds of obsidian, but this, this is one with the gray splotches in it. This one's called snowflake obsidian. So that's one that is real easy to, to spot. I've sold um, men's cufflinks um, with this snowflake obsidian. Uh, in it. So yeah, so it's going to have this really high shine. I've seen a lot, like here, arrowheads. I've seen a lot of um, jewelry, say on Etsy and stuff, made uh, from obsidian that are formed in arrowheads because it's really easy to, I wouldn't say easy to chip that way, but but it, it lends itself to that sort of form. Okay, gosh, did I fly through this? I really did. Um, the one other thing, so plastic, and again, apologies, I'm misspeaking about the plastic. I had no idea that the plastic would be <laughs> electrostatic. Interesting, interesting. Um, the one other thing I didn't talk about was get a percha, which is like a rubber resin. I think that's also from trees, um, but again, it'll smell real acrid, like rubber, rubbery smell when you when you rub it. So. Sarah says, Whippy Jet is only dull if it's dirty. It's used for its liquid luster. Thank you. Do you have a web, do you have a, a, a Facebook or, I mean, a, I'm going to see if you've got a, a channel that you share some, because that's something that's super interesting, especially if you work with it, Sarah, um, to put up some videos about Jet, because you would definitely have some people wanting to come check it out for sure. So I think that's it on my jewelry stuff. The only one I didn't, I didn't end up getting to test this or to go through it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that a little bit later. These ones, these earrings, I am pretty sure are the Whitby Jet. They're very, very cold to the touch. They've got that super, super high sheen. And, hang on, what was that? There was a, this is what I was gonna tell you. This one says Germany on the back. But there was a place, and now it's going to drive me nuts. I'll have to post in the in the jewelry group that a lot of 
plate. Oh gosh, it was a marking that if you see it, that it could be. Oh my gosh, my brain just went. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's right there. Now I'm gonna have to go back and look. Oh my gosh. No, not Bavaria. Oh gosh. You know how that is. I'm not that old. Come on. Come on, brain. I'm thinking, nope, nope. I'm just gonna have to call it and share it later. <laughs> if I remember, I'll put it in the description box below. But there's a, um, I'm not even gonna misspeak because I know if I say it, I'm gonna say, <laughs> I know exactly, yes. It's gone. Um, all right, so thank you again so much for watching, you guys. I feel like I ought to wear this one today. It's really pretty, huh? I, I mean, right? Why would my great grandmother keep it if she didn't want me to wear it? Right? Um, so I ought to just pull it out and wear it today. I'm gonna. All right, thanks you guys so much for watching. And again, if you're watching this later and I misspoke about something else, which is totally possible, definitely let me know because I want to correct any misspeaks that I have and want to share out good information. So, and also if you're interested, go down there and join Joy Lovers and Sellers. I would love to see you over there. We have lots of fun. And I will talk to you guys later. Oh, hang on. Sarah's got, I specialize in natural thermoset and thermoplastic materials used in the imitation of jet. Ooh, very interesting. That sounds really cool. Okay, thanks so much, you guys, for coming to hang out, and I will see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.